Frog with Two Heads, created and narrated by myself. It's a great day for playing, isn't it? asked Figgy. Yes, I'm loving being with you both, replied Freddy. And we're happy that you came with us, replied Floppy. Just then, there was a big splash in the pond. Hello, be careful, there are lots of snakes here. Piggy, Floppy and Freddy turned around to see who had spoken. Oh, hi, thanks for the warning you two, said Piggy. Um, we are not really two. Although we do have separate names, I'm Flynn and this is Finley. Whoa, you have two heads! I've never seen a frog with two heads before, said Floppy. Me neither, I'm unusual, said Figgy. Well, at least you will never be lonely, ha ha ha, said Floppy. Floppy, replied Figgy. Yes, he's right, but we do argue a lot, said Flynn. That's because you always want to be the boss, replied Finley. They say two heads are better than one. But I can see it's not always good news, said Figgy. I have a question, said Freddy. Who decides whether you go left or right? Well, that is one of our problems, said Flynn. We never agree on lots of things, especially food. Wow, it sounds too complicated for me, said Floppy. Food is our main problem, because of course, we only have one body. Whatever Flynn eats affects me, and whatever I eat affects him, said Finley. And deciding where to go and what to do is also a big problem, said Flynn. I think the one with the biggest head should win, said Floppy. What? Floppy, that's really not funny, said Figgy. Ha ha ha, Floppy, you are crazy, replied Freddy. OK, maybe we are able to solve some of your problems, said Figgy. Oh, I do hope that you can, replied Flynn. Yes, we would be ever so grateful, said Finley. That's a good start. You managed to both agree. Well, you are brothers, said Floppy. So you should try to get on with each other. Let's start with where to go and what to do. I think the answer is compromise, said Piggy. Yes, communicate, Floppy chipped in. First positive thing you have said, Floppy, replied Piggy. OK, listen carefully, Flynn and Finley. You need to share the decision making on a daily basis. Maybe you could make a chart or a rotor. For an example, Flynn could decide where to go and what to do on Monday. Then Finley could do the same on Tuesday and so on, said Piggy. Finley, why didn't we think of that, said Flynn. Yes, we should have. Thank you, Piggy. Now food, said Piggy, that's a bit more difficult. Maybe you should agree on all the different foods that you both like to eat and doesn't affect you. Then you can just eat those foods, said Piggy. So I think what you mean, Figgy, is if they both like flies and they don't affect them, then that's one food that they can both agree on, said Floppy. That's exactly right, Floppy. I'm sure they can agree on the foods they both like and doesn't affect them, replied Piggy. Thank you, guys. At last, my brother and I can agree. 
We can have days without arguing," said Flynn. So it's time for you to decide who chooses first where you will go," said Piggy. "I think they can decide by themselves," said Floppy. "As you said, Piggy, two heads are better than one." They all laughed and laughed. That's the end of this learning story. I hope you enjoyed meeting the brothers. All they needed to do was to talk to each other, and their problems would have been solved. If you have a brother or a sister, try not to fight. Just talk to each other and find a way to solve your problem. Bye bye. Today we will tell you a wonderful story about a sad duckling. Luckily, it has a happy ending. The Ugly Duckling story by Hans Christian Andersen, adapted and narrated by myself. It was a beautiful summer's day. The sun shines warmly on an old house near the river. Behind the house, a mother duck was sitting on her eggs. One by one, all of the eggs broke open. All except one. This was the biggest egg of all. At last, it broke open, and out comes the last baby duck. It looked big and strong. It was grey and ugly. They all went to the river to swim and play. The ugly duckling swam better than the rest. Later, they went to the farmyard, which was very noisy. The ugly duckling was not welcomed. The hens pecked him, the rooster flew at him, the ducks bit him, and the farmer kicked him. So he decided to run away from all the nasty farm animals. He ran and ran until finally he came to a river. There he saw lots of beautiful big birds. Their feathers so white, their necks so long, their wings so pretty. The duckling looked at them. How he wished that he too could be as beautiful as them. Now it's winter. Everything is white with snow. The river is covered with ice. The duckling was very cold and unhappy. Luckily, along came a kind farmer. He picked him up from the ice and took him home to his warm house. There he stayed all through the winter. He was warm and safe. But soon it was springtime, and the farmer returned him to the river. There he saw the beautiful swans again. He so much wanted to swim with them, but he was too afraid and worried that they would shoo him away. That went on for quite a while, but then he plucked up the courage and decided to join them. He ran into the river and looked into the water. There he saw a swan. But why is he so close? He looked around, and there was no one there. He looked again. Is that me? Can it be? Am I a swan? I'm a swan. I'm a swan. I'm not an ugly duckling no more. Yes, he had changed from the grey ugly duckling and grown into a beautiful swan. That's the end of this wonderful story. It has such a fantastic happy ending. I love this story, Floppy. What about you? I loved it too, and it really was beautiful. And it also has a moral: never judge someone just by their appearance. Bye bye.